A string of incidents that have taken place on brutal attacks on doctors. These are reports of just the past two days that are coming in from across states. In fact, the fourth case that has now been reported here that is coming from Kerala. A surgeon along with two workers were attacked at a district hospital in Alapuza. The attacker claimed that his mother was not treated properly in the hospital. But hospital records that were cross-checked by the police, the police is now investigating this case, the hospital records show that... Uh, the mother had already passed away. She was reported dead on arrival. Doctors uh, have held a silent protest outside the hospital and are now demanding strict action here against the man. There's yet another case now that's coming from Maharashtra. This is in Palkar, a team of five healthcare workers who were first stopped by the villagers and then attacked. The vehicle was vandalized by the mob and all of this at a time when the team had gone there to spread awareness about COVID. While two people have been arrested, uh, seven others are still on the run. And in Karnataka, this is in Chikmagluru, a pediatrics doctor was, a doctor was uh, brutally attacked by a victim of relatives after a six-year-old died. Now, the relatives held the doctor responsible for the death of the child, assaulted him, following which then four people were arrested. In yet another similar such incident, as we said, a total of four reported here that is coming in from across states. The fourth incident uh, coming in from Hojai in Assam. A group of patients' attendants uh, targeted the doctor after the patient succumbed. The mob then thrashed the doctor. Huge number of arrests now that have taken place. 24 people arrested so far. So we're going to be getting in various voices here on this, on what needs to be done so that doctors remain protected. This is, of course, uh, also in the wake of the pandemic and continuous work that has been on here to fight COVID-19 in the past uh, uh, over one year. Let's get in Mr. A.L. Banerjee, former DGP Uttar Pradesh connected here with us. Mr. Banerjee, good evening. Thank you for being with us here. In your view, how this should be handled or how the frequency of these attacks can be reined in? Because th there are enough existing laws, the most recent being an ordinance that was passed just last year, which was an amendment to the Epidemic Diseases Act here which now makes attack on doctors a punishable offence, a non-bailable offence? Uh, you see, there is one particular thing that the way the medical care in this country is being provided, somehow or the other, a large number of attendants are permitted inside the hospital. So initially, those hospitals where this kind of a trouble has taken place, or which are in those areas where this kind of a thing takes place more often than others. Some kind of a security arrangement by the hospital has to be ensured. Far more number of CCTVs has to be installed. And now that this new ordinance is there, I do hope and believe that the um, cases are being registered under the new ordinance also, whereby the punishment is there. Until and unless some of these people who have been thrashing doctors, unfortunately and very wrongly, are not mm -hmm. convicted, are sent behind bars for a long, prolonged period or they are given the due punishment which right. they deserve. But Mr. Mr. Banerjee, yes. the punishment is there, of course, not, not yet working as a deterrent here. But what about vigil? Vigil that needs to be kept by local police. Uh, to what extent can that happen? Why isn't that happening? You, you, okay, fine. Let, let, let's take the case of uh, KGMU, uh, King George Medical University in uh, Lucknow. Now, this is very near a police station. The police station can look, uh, look after it. But in other places where these incidents have happened, so even it has happened in, say, um, some, some very large hospitals, you just named four of them in four different areas. Maybe a police station is not nearby. Maybe there's not, uh, yes. not, not sufficient police force available. Maybe the uh, incident takes this all of a sudden. Maybe initially the, uh, um, the attendants there are convinced that everything has been uh, all right and suddenly they get into a frenzy. So all these things to take care of it, the first thing is to prevent a large number of attendants entering the hospital. Somehow or the other, the hospitals... Uh, and the government has yes, to come up but, with... But, Mr. Banerjee, that is, where, that is where mandatory vigilance by police can help. And that's what the doctors are demanding here as well. In fact, Dr. Shantan Hussain, uh, former national president of the IMA, connected with us here as well. Uh, Dr. Hussain, uh, in your view, are there enough existing laws 
despite that, the brutality with which doctors are being attacked, what more that needs to be done? Do you think that continuous police vigil or security at place is the only way to stop this? First of all, madam, I really wonder how people can think of assaulting a doctor during this COVID pandemic as well, when everyone is saying that doctors are trying to sa trying their best to, to save the mankind. As, as you know, nearly 1,000 doctors, they have sacrificed their, their life while fighting against COVID during this second wave of COVID pandemic. It's very unfortunate, number one. But the association has been fighting against this assault on doctors since long. That's why, on behalf of IMA, being a member of parliament, I have raised this issue on the floor of parliament. And we sincerely requested to come up with a bill against the violence on doctors. You will be surprised to know we had several meetings with our Honorable Health Minister, Dr. Harshavardhan. Finally, we got a signal from him. And he gave the major responsibility to IMA to be prepared mm -hmm. up and with many other organizations. But, but most unfortunate part of the entire story is when IMA along with other organizations prepared the draft, when they have put the same before the Ministry of Health, and when Dr. Harshavarton has put this before the union, uh, Home Ministry, that is before the uh, Union Minister of Home Affairs, Mr. Amit Shah, a home ministry okay. outrightly rejected, home ministry outrightly rejected and said no such bill can be brought for the doctors, no such bill for can be brought for the against the assault on the doctors. Now you tell me, is there any profession, is there any profession who who who, who the professionals of that profession they are sacrificing their life to save the mankind? Is there any profession Absolutely. where a person... Where yes, a person you're, you're also looking at more support that needs to come in from the government here as well. Uh, but, but, Doctor, as you mentioned specifications here, uh, given that we, we still have uh, the, the Epidemic Diseases Act uh, in play, it, it, it continues to remain invoked ever since uh, COVID was declared an epidemic in the country last year. Uh, and under that, an ordinance was introduced as an amendment to that here, which does take into account attack on ASHA workers and doctors, which says that this is now non-bailable, this is a punishable, punishable cognizable offence here. You could face imprisonment for up to seven years. Uh, what more that needs to be done to stop this, to, to, to stop the frequency with which attacks are see, happening? First of all, see, the, the most important thing that... The most important thing that is the need of the hour is a change of human perception. If if you cannot change yourself and if you still possess some will to, to assault a doctor, then nothing can change your this, this particular desire. Your good sense has to prevail, number one. And number two, central government, not only for this pandemic, this assault on doctors isn't isn't it has become a phenomenon. Assault on doctors and, and this hooliganism in health institutions, these have become usual phenomena which we can find throughout the year. So government should come with a strict law, with a strict rule against it, which they have failed. And it is surprising the same government, the Home Ministry, has rejected the proposal given by the Health Ministry. Can you even believe it? How can we expect that this government will take care of the doctors, the doctors who are saving the mankind at the cost of their own lives? And if even during this pandemic they can't save the doctors, then when can they? Okay. Well, Dr. Sain, this is an important point that you're raising. Let's get in Anila Singh of the BJP connected with us here as well. Uh, Anila, there, there is a demand, there is, there is an outcry, there is a plea coming in from doctors here that uh, they, they need a stronger word from the government uh, speaking out on the protection of doctors. And that can only happen once uh, there is a stronger, more stringent law that has been signed in by the central government. I absolutely stand with the doctors, with the demand uh, of the doctors, and uh, we know it very well how they are serving during this uh, very bad corona times. But uh, uh, I can give you an example of my state, Uttar Pradesh, from where I come. Here the chief minister has already ordered anybody who uh, gets indulged in such a crime, like attacking doctors or uh, uh, any sort of uh, activity against uh, 
अगेंस्ट द एक्टिविटीज विच आर बींग स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट फॉर द करोना और बाय द हेल्थ फैकल्टी एंड इफ लाइक सम वन अटैक्स द हेल्थ वर्कर्स और एनीथिंग एल्स देन एन एस ए विल बी इवोक्ट सो आई एम प्रिटी श्योर दैट अदर स्टेट्स वेयर सच इंसिडेंट्स आर बींग ऑब्जर्व दे आर गोइंग टू टेक स्ट्रिक्टेस्ट ऑफ action against those who are attacking right. our doctors right so so anila are you saying that this now becomes a state subject since you're specifically giving the example of what the up government here is has done are you saying that this now becomes a state state subject the issue of protection of doctors and health workers is not something that can be brought in by the central government does this remain a state subject here where we have different state governments looking at this differently indeed law and order is a state subject and state governments should look after the security and safety of health workers right uh, th there was a strong charge anila when when we were speaking with dr sain who's also connected here with us I i'm going to in fact going to take in your response to him here uh, dr sain given the fact that this now comes down to individual state governments while in the recent most case that we are discussing here the arrests of course have taken place but uh, it is no longer a deterrent even if there is a law at hand it's not working as a deterrent on ground do you do you think that this is more about awareness this is more about sensitizing people on this issue now i'm very sorry to disagree first of all yes i do agree that law and order and health is health is at the set chapters but center cannot resolve the responsibility when it has mm -hmm. become a national phenomenon when assault on doctors has become a national event center right. cannot shoulder the responsibility and when they they can bring any bill at any point of time every now and then even by the process of bringing an ordinance that what prevents them from bringing the such law which can protect the doctors at large from the uh, of this entire country which prevents them tell me <laughs> right uh, anila given the fact here that the the impetus more is uh, for the central government to step in and there was a proposal that was brought in from the union health ministry as well but it was rejected by the union home ministry saying that there cannot be a separate law which is only to protect doctors do you think that there needs to be a change in that stance today in the wake of this pandemic especially i don't think so it is required and Ms. dr sain must understand one thing very clearly that there is a system on which any government works and constitution has divided different things in different lists so if we talk about law and order it comes in state list so it is an state issue as i mentioned i gave you an example of uttar pradesh and i can say that other state governments must be following it if they are not then they should copy up's chief minister what he is doing right now when the the strictest and the exemplary punishment should be given to those who are attacking health workers it is not that that everything central government has to do dr sain must understand this thing so every everything has a system and a itinerary to follow so this is what i have to say regarding attack on health workers no but what what's working against the system if uh, if the central government take takes a step here on this given the fact that the central health ministry had brought in this proposal to begin with the health ministry might have uh, brought in the proposal and home ministry rejected it because home ministry knows that law and order is a state uh, subject and ultimately it is the state government uh, police and administration who have to take action against uh, anybody who is attacking health workers so let them do the job let them do the job yes indeed i do i mean uh, such uh, incidents are pathetic and it is sad to see when we see our doctors or any any paramedic or nurses or anybody getting attacked but yes it is the matter of the state and they all right dr sain very it. quickly what we are hearing right now that this restricted to a state issue if you could respond this certainly doesn't sound very assuring this doesn't allay the concerns of doctors today then madam am i to believe that dr harshvardhan who is the union health minister he doesn't know that health is a step chapter and law and order is a step chapter and he was a fool that so, so that he formed that committee involving all the is officers and the senior bureaucrats of different departments including the leaders of ima and they took some time and they prepared a draft and they have put forward before mr amit shah 
Am I to believe that Dr. Harshvardhan doesn't know the constitutional uh, provisions and he doesn't know uh, that health is a state chapter and law and order is a state chapter? This is simply the way of disordering the responsibility, number one. And number two, you can never equate this medical profession with any other profession. Are, the, are they the engineers who are coming in front to save your life during this COVID? Or are they the any other professionals who are, who are uh, mm -hmm. uh, dedicating their own lives to save your life during COVID? You can never equate the medical profession. You can never equate the doctors of, with any other professionals. With due respect to all professions, I can say this. Absolutely. So well, Dr. Sain, I'm afraid we'll have to leave it at that. Anila Singh, many thanks for speaking to us here on this as well. Undoubtedly, there's, there's no one else to replace doctors here, and there needs to be stricter action taken against on these cases here as well. And for both central as well as state governments to take stricter note of these cases with stronger vigil and police presence at hospitals.